the Haggadah has a consistent use of the number four. There are four questions, four sons. There are four expressions of redemption. Why is the number four so significant in the in the Haggadah? But let's go to a, uh, a prior question. If we did a survey, we made a survey in the Jewish world, the last holiday that seems to have a hold on the collective unconscious of the Jewish people is the Pesach Seder. However, paradoxical, contradictory, secular Jews most often, more often than any other holiday, retain a connection to some residual remnant of a Seder. Is it Allahic Seder? Unfortunately, tragically, most significantly not. On the other hand, there is a connection, a reaching for some touching back to a connection with Am Yisrael, with the Jewish people, that's more than any other Yontif the Pesach Seder reflects. Why would that be true Pesach? Yom Kippur runs a close second, but it's not not the same, and perhaps Yom Hashem will have occasion to talk about Yom Kippur another time. So we've asked two questions. Why is the number four such a recurring theme? Two, why is it that of all the holidays that the Pesach Seder has such a grip on the unconscious, on the the memory of the of Yisrael? One of the customs that the Seder also deserves our attention is that it's customary to take a hard-boiled egg, dip it in salt water, and we're told that that corresponds to a calling up, a mentioning, calling attention to Tisha B'Av. Because the, whatever night of the week the say the falls, that will be the same night of Tisha B'Av. Now, it seems very strange that the Pesach later we go to all kinds of uh, gymnastics, uh, acrobatics, uh, halachically, spiritually, to to make the environment festive, royal. You're not supposed to chew on the uh, on the bone of, uh, because you're part of an aristocracy that night, of freedom. So why would we want to call attention to Tisha B'av? Isn't that jarring? Isn't that out of context? Of course, we do have the moror, but the moror is part of the success of the Exodus, is the referring to the slavery, and then the being extricated from that and the exodus. We have three questions now. Three questions. One, why fourness? Two, why does this day of all the holidays of the year, why does it have a such a hold on the collective memory of the Jewish people. Three is why do we call attention to Tisha B'Av this night? Okay, so it happens to be the same night, but why would we want to bring that, incorporate that into the Seder? Seems seems out of context. And then lastly, Pesach is referred to as Shabbos. In the 
mitzvah of the svira, the counting of the Omer. It's Mimochus of Shabbos, the day after Shabbos, which we are taught that was the cornerstone of the Machlokas, the argument between the Belushim and the Tzedukim. And the Tzedukim wanted to say it meant Shabbos, gracious, it meant actual Shabbos. And our Messiah had it that Shabbos over there refers to refers to Pesach for some reason, which of course deserves explanation. So let's let's start with the question of the secular Jew being somehow still enchanted with some some charisma, magnetism of shot of the Pesach Seder that still pulls and tugs at his soul. What was the state of affairs, Pesach, early on then, historically? Kalyasel, in slavery, they were culturally also spiritually disenfranchised from their connection to halacha. On the other hand, they had a certain loyalty to their forefathers to the extent that they, according to some of the Medroshim, they maintained certain customs. If they have a serving idolatry, but family loyalty they had, and a certain loyalty in the sense of language and dress, that it was Jewish identity, merely Jewish identity, was meaningful to them. As we are taught, that last vestige of connection, Jewish identity, was at risk too. And that's why they had to be extricated, plucked out, at the at that moment of truth, it, they couldn't last any longer there. They were at the edge, the precipice, of toppling over into losing that as well. The Nitziv points out that the when just before the new Paro begins his decrees, we're told that Kalyosov began to spread out, to disperse. They were leaving Goshen. Up till that point, they had they had retained a certain sense of separateness. Slaves, yes, but there was a certain separateness, and they began to seek out, and then things began to... That was the beginning of the decrees and the beginning of the slippery slope downwards, but there was still this last gossamer thread of Jewish identity that was holding them. And then they had to be plucked out. So at this point, Chazal, Dao Shantaposik, that they were Orim, the area, they were bereft of mitzvahs. But they needed mitzvahs in order to merit getting out. Yes, Jewish identity, but they needed mitzvahs. The Rebbe is going to give them Korban Pesach, Kiddush HaChodesh, that the mitzvahs that will be indigenous to this space and time, that will be the necessary spiritual energy to help get them back on track. But at this moment when the Rebbe Shalom reaches out to Klai Yisrael, Kabbalistically speaking, our tradition teaches us that after the pact, the covenantal pact of Rome with the Rebbeinu Shlelem, and then confirmed, reaffirmed with Yitzhak and Yaakov, there, the Rebbeinu Shlelem has now a commitment, as it were, a cosmic commitment that Klai Yisrael is going to make it to the finish line in history. Klai Yisrael then, now at the edge in Mitzrayim, 
they have to be plucked out. So there are two options. When Klai Yisrael spiritually bankrupts, then the Rebbe Nishlam has been a guarantor, the godly guarantor, the Rebbe Nishlam is going to extricate them to make sure that they will make it to that finish line. What's preferable? That we should earn our own keep. We should declare prophets. Prophets, Tauti Mashma. Yes, through prophecy we can declare prophets spiritually. Recognizing the pro- prophecy, connecting to it, prophet sharing. Okay, so Klai Yisrael now is at the edge. The rebellion and the guarantor has to, has to come forward. And then, but that people, it's important to note, is not yet ready to receive Torah. It's going to take time to build up a certain amount of receptivity to be the appropriate beneficiaries of the Sinaitic encounter. They're not yet ready for that. But the Rebbe Shalom is taking them out. They must go out at this point. So... There are two forces in Jewish history. When the Rebbe Nishlam reaches to us, as was then, itaruta de le'ila, the Rebbe Nishlam, the arousal from above, or itaruta de le'tata, sometimes it's the way ideally it should be that we are reaching to the Rebbe Nishlam, earning our keep, declaring prophets. Again, tarti mashma. When we don't reach to the Rebbe Nisham, the Rebbe Nisham reaches to us as a nation, as a nation. What happened then in Mitzrayim, as we were at the edge of this spiritual bankruptcy, and the Rebbe Nisham reached to us, now the Derech Hashem, the Meshul Tzato says that a Jewish holiday is not a yontif by us, is not commemorating something that happened way back then. It is coming back to a place in time when we are revisiting that spiritual, intellectual reality. We are coming back to that landscape. We have exited the turnpike of history and now come to a new space in time. So every time that date rolls around, the world exits, Klajasel exits, and now it's the month of Nisan, and we're coming to Pesach. And when we come to Pesach, the Rebbe Nishalem then has us in a space, a mind space, a heart space, a soul space, that takes us back to that place in time when the Rebbe Nishlam was looking for us. The Rebbe Nishlam aroused us. So every secular Jew, knowingly, unknowingly, is revisited by that reality, is touched, by that is tugged, by that magnetism of the Rebbe Nishlam reaching to him. When we come to this place, in time, knowingly, unknowingly, caringly, uncaringly, irresistibly taken back to a place in time. And so it would follow that what we find in reality that this is what's happening, that the Jews with minimal, minimal receptivity, just Jewish identity, can that get lost? Yeah, we were at the we were at the edge in, in Mitzrayim as well. But if there is minimal Jewish sense of identity, it can be prodded, provoked, stimulated to, to be reawakened. That's what happens on Pesach for this so-called secular. It's interesting, the Shari Aaron uh, quotes his rabbi of Desla, I don't know if it's written anywhere in Rav Desla's name, but uh, uh, Rav Rota, Rav Baron Rota, quoted the Rav Desla as saying, just like the Pusik tells us 
לא מאסתם, לא גרתם לחלויסם, I'm not going to find in the teichach or in the chastisement, the admonishment, I'm not going to find you so despicable and abominable as to totally annihilate you. Clad your soul will always continue. Individuals, particular families, that, that depends on schusim, on merit. Mm-hmm. But the, the Rebbeinu Shlelem gives a commitment in the Teichach, as bad as it will be, the re- will, connect, will remain connected. Rav Desla said, quoted Rav Rota, that this applies not just nationally, it applies individually, the specific, particular person, Jew. What we, in the idiom of the, of the community, call the Pintalayid, that is this commitment that not just quantitatively but qualitatively there will always be this residual sense of loyalty to connect. One might ask that the only 20% made it out of Mitzrayim, Chamushim Olu. But I would answer that those that didn't make it out would did not have the privilege of participating in the Exodus and the Yetzirah Mitzrayim, which that miraculous, monumental, watershed moment created the people. And it's the people, as a people, as a nation, Am Yisrael, that will then have this microcosm, macrocosm kind of a relationship that the Loma Astim, Logaltim, will give us the microcosm of the Pintalayid, not just the macrocosm of Klai making it to the finish line. But there'll be Anyone who has yet not uprooted, totally rejected, can be a beneficiary of the being the pen, pentelid. Okay, so that is one one question that we're revisiting that space and time. <clears throat> the number four, the number four, four corresponds to the matriarchs. The patriarchs were three, of Ram Yitzhak and Yaakov. But the matriarchs were four. Yaakov had two wives, Rachel and Leah. Fourness represents the matriarchs. The matriarchs, let's call that the matriarchal syndrome from this point, symbolizes, reflects the reality of being born Jewish. Did somebody do something to earn that privilege? At the moment that he's born, no. Prior generations, chusim, of course. But at the moment of his birth, he didn't earn that advantage, that virtue, that upside of being Jewish. It was given as a fact of being. So the matriarchal of course, there's a ger, ger tzedek, and we can get into all kinds of analysis of what, what gerus means in Jewish history. Uh, a fascinating Rabbi Kivega that says that the gerim, when he was asked, uh, how can we see gerim that are such tzaddikim and frequently Jews that are renegades? Said, because clearly at the moment at Sinai, the were Jews that did not. Klein Yisrael overwhelmed the few that didn't want to receive the Torah, not Sevenishma. Similarly, when the Goyim were beforehand offered the Torah and they rejected it, Esav, Yishmael, that Makosov uh, that Kneva, the Tzicha, they couldn't handle it. There was some Goyim that wanted it, said Rabbi Kivega. And if you find Gerim that are tzaddikim, these are the progeny of those Gerim that wanted to accept the Torah. But let's go with the norm. The norm is born of a Jewish mother, he's a, he's a Jew. 
He didn't do anything to earn that. It was a fact that was presented to him and determined by providence. That then is in keeping with the Rebani Shalom reaching to us. It's a fact that's given to us that is a state of being that, yes, Am Yisrael is going to make it. Yes, the individual Jew is the Pintula Yid. Yes, when you're born Jewish, you are Jewish. You can't escape it. Can you reject the advantages of it? Can you deny? You can go through the motions of doing that, but on one level of reality, the halacha says you are a Jew that has tried to escape and you cannot escape that reality. It's a fact. It's a given. That's a given. Similarly, Shabbos. Difference between Shabbos and Yontif. Yontif, the Kedusha of Yontif is Christ as a partner. In the Tzula on Yontif we say, Mekadesh Yisrael Vehazmanim. Bezdin has to determine when is Rosh Chodesh, and according to when Rosh Chodesh falls, that is when the Yontaf will fall. Shabbos is clear of a it's a fixed reality. Shabbos rolls around every seventh day, it's determined about Shabbos, been happening, we say Mekadesh HaShabbos, the Rebbe is Mekadesh Shabbos. We have to call attention to be in rhythm and step with that Kedusha by being Mekadish the Shabbos, but we are not creating that Kedusha. The Kedusha is a reality unto itself. In the Shutfis of creation of Yontif, Kladyasel is a full partner. The Ramban points out there that many understand that the Aloha says we don't use the summim, the spices, to console ourselves, Maitzi uh, Yontif, like we do Maitzi Shabbos, that some want to say indicates that there's no Neshama Yaseira on Yontif. So it's not exiting, so we don't need the psalmim. Shabbos, there's a Neshama Yaseira. Shomi Yaseira is a gift that's given by the Rebbe Nishlalem. Yontif, says the Ram, Ramban, we helped create that Kedusha. So that Neshama Yaseira does not exit. That's why we don't need the psalmim. So, very apt then, that just like the Rebbe Simcha says, just like we cautioned regarding Shabbos, that we shouldn't carry in the Rishus Rabbim. Similarly, Losei Pesach Beisai on Pesach had a closing us in the home. Perhaps that's part of the message today is that the Shabbos and Pesach and being quarantined has a as a dimension of Shabbos to it that has us each on our own level, in our own space, head space, heart space, soul space, to revisit the quality of how we keep Shabbos and upgrade our Shabbos and to think about Am Yisrael out there who is not yet keeping Shabbos and how we can extend our our reach to incorporate them and bring them into our homes. That leaves the... We touched on fourness, the matriarchs. That's something that happens to us. Tisha B'Av. Now, what about Tisha B'Av? Why do we, why is that, how does that fit in with the royalty and the 
and the sense of festivity and aristocracy, the best utensils, the most delicious food. How, how does that fit? The best clothes. How does that, how does that fit with calling attention to Dishabo? I would submit the following analogy. There are, I'm a potential investor. And people approach me. There are two companies. One company has a sterling record, brilliant profit record over the paying dividends, profit declaring over the years. But they don't have a game plan for recession and surely not for depression. There's another company, not done so brilliantly. They've made money, made some profits, but they don't have a game plan for how to deal with recession and surely not depression. Which do you invest in? Most sober investors that I know would go for the second company. The Rebani Shalom, the Halocha, Anshik Nesis the Balei Hagoda are teaching us. They're telling us, yes, you're at a moment of ascendancy. You're at a moment of exhilaration. Tremendous bounty. It's a time of plenty. Pesach. But there are going to be downturns in Jewish history. There'll be times when you're not declaring, recognizing, owning up to the prophet, P.H. prophet. And hence, you need a game plan for dealing with those situations. They're going to come up. Moshe Rabbeinu already anticipates it, that Klai is going to have these downturns. Yemiyo Novi in Eicho writes, says, V'hayinu ki yosoymim ein ov. We were like orphans without a father. Now, what's the diuk? But a mother was there. As we approach spiritual bankruptcy, in the Messianic era, as we approach these times of failing, and the Rebbein Shem is going to reach to us. But the matriarchal mode, even minimal Jewish identity, will stand us in good stead to the extent that we can reconnect and make use of the collective unconscious plug-in, we can have a sense, a bittersweet sense of surviving in moments of stress. So what makes more sense than to call attention to above at the moment when we're declaring such success and such profits. Hashem Yitain, the Rebbeinu should give us the Nachas, should grant us the, the Chesed, the Rachamim that we so sorely need at this moment for Klai Yisrael and give it to us the the Benishon is Beirer Refuas. He creates. It's not just formula. It's not Yotzer Beirer Refuas. He creates those Refuas. Things that were not thought of, not heard of. Just as this was unanticipated, so the Benishon up his cosmic sleeve. Who knows what plan is there? One thing we do know. Kaya so. Two, that the Pintaliyid is able to be resuscitated and revived. There'll be a renaissance. 
is a renaissance every moment. And we should be Zeicha, Bimheira, to a Pesach, with Simcha, Bimheira, be a